Today's video is a brand and product overview of Drunk Elephant. First, we probably want to discuss the brand's philosophy. Drunk Elephant labels themselves as a clean brand and they highlight the fact that they omit certain ingredients. They call these the Suspicious Six. The Suspicious Six includes everything like essential oils, chemical sunscreens, fragrance and dyes, silicone and drying alcohol, as well as SLS. Because they omit these ingredients, they label the fact that all their formulas are biocompatible to all skin types. They define biocompatibility as ingredients that the skin can recognize, process, and accept. I should mention they've gotten in trouble in the past because of their strong philosophy of clean ingredients. The main issue was that if someone said their skin reacted to a product, they would say, or their general response would be, it might, can't be our products, everything is biocompatible. It, it may be something else that you're using. When that controversy happened, I was actually uh, doing research and planning on filming this video, but I stepped back a little bit because it wasn't a good time. And I didn't think I'd film this again, but they recently got bought out by Shiseido, which is a bigger company. It's possible that uh, the founder felt very protective of their formula. So having that distance and having a parent company that now controls this brand is probably smarter long-term. Although I'm saying all these words and I'm not quite sure how she said it owns Drunk Elephant. Like, do they own 50%? Do they only own 10%? Do they own all of it? Uh, but this is just to say that they did get bought out, which I'm assuming will mean changes to certain practices. The Drunk Elephant packaging is very well recognized. It's easy to spot from a mile away. It has this luxurious white creamy texture to it, very soft touch, very bright. Most importantly, everything about the bottle itself is created so you can grab every last drop of product and that's because they have an air system. I don't know if you've ever noticed, you get to the bottom of the product, you can actually open it and you'll see that it's spotless. And because of this opaque packaging, they minimize exposure to light and oxygen, which means the product gets to be more potent for longer. Now on to product. The first one I want to talk about is the TLC Framboose Glycolic Night Serum, which is the first product I think I tested from Drunk Elephant. It retails for $118 Canadian and $90 USD. And its goal is to refine and resurface skin for a brighter, more even complexion. It's a nighttime serum that consists of of both alpha hydroxy acids as well as beta hydroxy acids. These include glycolic acid, lactic acid, citric acid, tartaric acid, as well as salicylic acid. It's safe to say that glycolic acid and salicylic acid are the main components in this formula. It has 12% glycolic and 1% salicylic acid with a pH of 3.8, which is optimal for chemical exfoliants. So the glycolic portion is what penetrates deeply and breaks down the glue between cells to help you shed quicker. That resurfacing component uh, improves texture, hyperpigmentation, photo damage, and discoloration. Salicylic acid works deeper into the pores, so it works on congestion and acne. It's a very efficient skin resurfacing uh, serum. It's lightweight, but it's also quite potent. If you have sensitive skin, I'd recommend test patching before even applying it all over your face. If you are gonna use it, I never use it more than one to two times a week. Drunk Elephant did also include other ingredients like antioxidants, sodium hyaluronate, and marula oil to hydrate. As the name suggests, the night serum should only be used in the evening, and you have to make sure to wear sunscreen in the morning because it does increase photosensitivity. Next, the C Firma Day Serum is another favorite of mine, and this retails for $105 Canadian and $80 US. Its goal is to firm, brighten, and minimize signs of aging. It's actually a very potent uh, vitamin C based serum. They use the gold standard L ascorbic acid. Vitamin C comes in many forms and derivatives, and not all of them are made equally. Skin only knows how to read the L ascorbic format, so it doesn't have to convert it into anything else, which means you're getting all that vitamin C absorbed quicker. It has 15% L ascorbic acid with a pH of 3.3. Vitamin C itself is very unstable. It, as soon as it's exposed to oxygen and light, it starts to break down and become less potent. But vitamin C stabilizes the compound with 0.5 ferulic acid and 1% vitamin E. So vitamin C in general is a strong antioxidant and proven to boost collagen production, protect collagen, and further support your sunscreen by 
protecting your skin from UV rays. It also has that brightening effect by fading any hyperpigmentation. But the formula doesn't stop there. Drunk Elephant infused it with things like pumpkin, seed extract, green tea, sodium hyaluronate, marula oil, and licorice root extract, which all have hydrating and brightening properties. So they definitely support that vitamin C in brightening your skin. It's a great formula for normal to dry skin, but it's too thin oily and sticky for oily skin. So I wouldn't recommend it if you're very combo to oily. I like to use this in the morning because that way I can enjoy its full protective benefits. Because of its oiliness, I apply it last after my face cream and before my sunscreen. The Drunk Elephant A Passione 1% Retinol Cream retails for $98 Canadian and $74 USD. I've done a lot of videos on this cream, so if you want more in-depth content, I will try to link those up in the cards. The goal of the A Passione cream is to promote skin renewal, increase collagen production, reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, improve the signs of skin damage, and retinol has these anti-acne properties as well. Again, I'm not going to dive too deeply into retinol and all the different concentrations. Retinoids are very complex and require their own video, so I'm going to link the video here above so you can learn a bit more about this ingredient. But in general, retinol is a cell communicating ingredient that allows your skin to work at its best. Retinol, as with vitamin C, comes in many forms and shapes and not all of them are made equally. At 1%, this is a very, very strong formula and if it's your first time experiencing retinoids, this is not the place you should begin. Drunk Elephant also infused the Apassioni cream with things like passion fruit extract, apricot, kale, and winter cherry extract. They also added peptides and fatty acids. My only concern is when they released this, Drunk Elephant made it seem like anybody can apply this cream and be okay and I think there's been a lot of mishaps because of this people have burnt their skin or been very irritated even I believed you can mix retinol with other products and spread it all over but I've since realized and decided that you absolutely cannot mix this with other products if you're gonna use retinol apply it on dry clean skin don't mix it in with other formula. If you're manually mixing products, you're not necessarily dispersing it evenly. You might have like a lot of retinol on this side. You might have a little bit of retinol on this side. So that just increases risks of irritation. Retinol is a highly effective ingredient and if it's misused or overused, it can really damage your skin and then you're going to spend a lot of time trying to fix those damages. The other thing about this product is that the packaging is very annoying. When I first got it, it's a very cute, aesthetically pleasing paint tube. But the product leaks on its own, unfortunately. There's like no control or stoppage of this flow. I've lost a lot of product because of this leaking. So that's a little bit annoying. Now on to the face creams that Drunk Elephant offers. The first one is the Proteiny Polypeptide Moisturizer. This one retails for $89 Canadian and $68 US. Its goal is to improve the appearance of skin's tone, texture, and firmness. It basically uses the powers of peptides, also known as amino acids, to hydrate the skin. Peptides have been shown to support your collagen, improve your elastin, and preserve hyaluronic acid, all of which work to keep your skin looking plump. It's a great moisturizer for both dry and oily skin. It does not have a greasy residue. And besides all the peptides, Drunk Elephant infused it with vitamin E, which is an antioxidant. This face cream sits at a pH of 4, which is a little low, but it does not disrupt the acid mantle. It's a good pH for your skin. Now on to one of my most favorite Drunk Elephant products is the Lala Retro Whipped Cream. This retails for $79 Canadian and $60 US. Its goal is to rescue and quench dry, dull skin. It's way richer in texture than the Proteiny. If you've ever used both, you'll notice that quite quickly. And as the name suggests, it's a whipped formula, so it's very fluffy and airy. The main ingredients here is a six blend of African oils. I don't know exactly what that consists of. I didn't go through the list um, to determine which is considered an African oil, um, so I can't really speak on that. It also has plantain leaf extract, which is an anti-inflammatory and hydrating ingredient. The other main hydrator here is sodium hyaluronate, which hydrates a lot better than hyaluronic acid. It's surprisingly a very basic moisturizing ingredient list. It also has glycerin which acts like a humectant. Its pH here sits a bit higher than proteiny. It's at a skin friendly 5.5. So again, it's a very basic but great moisturizer. It does what it needs to do but the price point may not necessarily translate to the ingredient list. When I was doing my research on these products, it was before Drunk Elephant decided to reformulate the Lala Retro Cream. So they've infused this with ceramides and if you want to watch that, I did an in-depth video on the whole product. 
The D Bronzy Anti Pollution Sunshine Drops retails for $48 Canadian and $36 US. This is also another favorite of mine. The goal here is to deliver a bronzy glow without the long term consequences of sun tanning. It's formulated with raw, unrefined cocoa powder. And the formula straddles that skincare slash makeup category. Its key ingredients include grape seed extract, green tea, sodium hyaluronate, and vitamin E, all of which hydrate or protect the skin. It it also has some peptides and fatty acids which are nice emollients. I love to mix this into my foundation or my face cream especially if I'm looking dull and tired. Um, it really brightens the skin. The only thing is it's if you're pale like me it's way too pigmented when you apply it directly on your skin like you will end up with streaks of orange on there so I like to cut it a little bit with a face cream or my foundation. Okay now on to the Virgin Marula oil. If you follow me on Instagram I never shut up about this oil so I'm going to try not to be too biased. This retails for $95 Canadian and $72 US. Its goal is to deliver powerful skin restorative results while hydrating. It's only made up of marula oil. Marula oil is great at hydrating and it seeps into the skin very well because of small molecular size. Marula oil is very rich in fatty acids which are great emollients and hydrators. It has 73% oleic acid, 15% palminic acid, and 9% linoleic acid. The high concentrations of oleic acid makes it great for dry skin because this is what your sebum consists of but the fact that it's high in oleic acid can be disruptive for oily acne prone skin because again this oleic acid is what your sebum is made of so if you add more and you have oily skin you can risk clogging your pores. Again there's only one ingredient and that's marula oil and you're like how do I spend hundred dollars on a one ingredient product? I'm very biased and I understand your concerns and that's why I actually made a comparison between the dupe the Ordinary's marula oil and the Drunk Elfin's marula oil so you guys can watch that and see how I compared both products. Now on to the two cleansers that Junk Elephant offers. The first one is the Slay Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. This is one of their most recent launches and it retails for $45 Canadian and $34 US. Its goal is to break down SPF and makeup without disrupting your precious acid mental. This one specifically goes from a solid to an oily texture. It works wonderfully on dry skin but also oily skin because you do wash it off. If you're new to balms, they're meant to be your first a cleanse in a two-step routine. They're meant to break down SPF and makeup, prep your skin for the second cleanse. This formula is super rich on dry skin. It feels a little heavy, so I can't imagine what it feels like on oily skin. The majority of the ingredients are fruit extracts, and this includes blueberry, kiwi, and strawberry extract. Those are sort of fragrant fruits, so they might cause some irritation long term, especially if you're sensitive to fragrance. It goes further into cranberry seed oil, acai seed oil, and I believe watermelon seed oil. We use marula and safflower seed oil as well. The nice thing about safflower seed oil, just like marula oil, it's rich in fatty acids, but it sort of has the opposite composition from marula oil, high in linoleic acid versus being high in oleic acid. The fact that it's high in linoleic acid makes it less likely to clog your pores. I also think the fact that they magnetized the spatula was brilliant. I never lost it the whole time I was using the product. They did add a sort of bamboo physical exfoliant that was meant to be mixed into the cleanser so you can have physical exfoliation. I would not use that and I wouldn't recommend it. It should have never been included. Um, you risk of hurting your skin, especially if you use a lot of chemical exfoliants or retinols. The other cleanser that they offer is the number nine Bestie Jelly Cleanser. I don't think this gets much hype and it's not a, really a product that I reach for or rave about. It retails for $42 Canadian and $32 US and the goal here is to remove all traces of makeup, excess oil, pollution, and any other grime from the day. If you are going to use only Drunk Elephant products, you would probably use the Slay Balm first and then use the Jelly Cleanser or next that would be a good two-step routine it recently got not recently a couple years back they did reformulate the formula and the packaging it's a nice jelly formula that doesn't disrupt the skin it doesn't make you feel like it strips all the oils it doesn't give you that dry feeling it's a relatively basic formula that includes surfactants emollients and humectants which is what your cleanser needs to include the TLC Sukari baby facial has a definite cult following it retails for $80 US and it's not available in Canada because of its high concentrations of chemical exfoliant its goal 
goal is to act as a super strong skin resurfacer to reveal greater clarity, improved skin texture and tone, and a more youthful radiant. It's formulated with 25% alpha hydroxy acids, which include glycolic, tartaric, lactic, and citric acid, very similar to the TLC Night Serum. The only problem is that 25% AHA is a very broad statement. We don't know if this includes, you know, 2% lactic acid or 1% lactic acid. We don't know how that breakdown occurs. The only thing you can safely assume is that glycolic acid makes up a huge portion of that 25% because it's actually the second ingredient next to water on the ingredient list. It also has 2% BHA uh, or beta hydroxy acid, which most of the time is salicylic acid. It also has fruit extracts uh, to act like antioxidants. Drunk Elephant loves their fruit extracts. It also has niacinamide, which is an anti-oil, anti-acne, um, anti-inflammatory ingredient, and it has marula oil. That it definitely comes with a cult following. I've enjoyed using it. I think I've used it two to three times, but when I run out, I don't necessarily feel like it's the end of the world. There's a lot of products out there that do the same thing, maybe on a long-term basis versus an immediate brightening effect. Now on to Drunk Elephant Eye Creams. They offer two. The first one is the Shaba Complex Eye Cream. This retails for $79 Canadian and $60 USD. Its goal is to firm and smooth under eye skin. It's formulated with black tea ferment, another word for kombucha. It also has copper peptides and idolized stem cells. Fermented black tea, again, also known as kombucha, has a very intense antioxidant effect. Copper peptide is an anti-aging, antioxidant complex. It's basically been shown to preserve things that keep your skin plump like elastin, collagen, and hyaluronic acid. Idolized uh, stem cells sounds very fancy, but it's basically just undifferentiated cells removed from the idolized plant. And they're shown to have antioxidant properties, but I didn't see uh, studies beyond that. And if I didn't mention, it also has niacinamide and sodium hyaluronate, two ingredients that Drunk Elephant loves and those are great at brightening and protecting the under eye. It's very creamy and rich in texture. A little goes a long way. This product has caused Melia in the past for me, so that's why I've stepped away from it. Um, if you do enjoy thicker formulas and your under eye can handle it, this is a great cream. The other eye cream is a C Tango multivitamin eye cream. This is a vitamin C based and it retails for $84 Canadian and $64 US. Its main goal is to brighten and firm, which is where the vitamin C comes into play. It does use a variety of peptides just like the Shaba eye cream, but it also includes five forms of vitamin C. Like I mentioned, L-ascorbic is the gold standard, but it comes in many different forms formats. Having five different forms doesn't make it necessarily better than any than ascorbic acid. Your skin still needs to convert it into the gold standard L-ascorbic acid to even process it. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the eye creams. They do win a lot of awards and they're very popular with a lot of people, but both of the formulas did cause Melia. In my case, my under eye is very sensitive and I prefer serum-based eye creams. Another serum that Drunk Elephant offers is the B Hydra Intensive Hydration Gel Cream. This retails for $63 Canadian and $48 US. Its goal is to hydrate using vitamin B5 and replenish nutrients in the skin to improve texture and tone. I do believe they reformulated the texture. Maybe they didn't announce it. Uh, was that a helicopter? Like I was saying, I think they did reformulate this because it used to be a clear gel that was very hard to absorb, but now lately it's a creamy, more opaque texture that absorbs phenomenally. Maybe I'm making this up. Maybe I had a bad batch, but I do feel like they reformulated it at some point. I love having this on hand. Vitamin B5 is a fantastic skin ingredient. The skin benefits of vitamin B5 are quite extensive, but one of them that I enjoy the most is its healing properties. There's actually studies out there that showed vitamin B5 speeds up healing um, surgical scars in patients. Most importantly, vitamin B5 likes to work with vitamin C, so I do like to use this in the morning. Um, sometimes I'll layer my C firma with my B hydra. They work great together. Finally, moving on to sunscreen, Drunk Elephant offers sort of one and a half um, products. Uh, the one that I'm going to talk about is the Umbra Sheer Physical Sunscreen. This has an SPF of 30 and it retails for $45 Canadian and $34 US. It's a physical sunscreen with zinc oxide. When you incorporate zinc oxide into a formula, you're naturally going to get that white cast no matter what. But Drunk Elephant does minimize that somehow. It blends beautifully on the skin. You will notice a little bit of whiteness, but if you take the time, 
to work it into your skin. It disappears very well. It does feel a bit wet on the skin and needs a solid five minutes to dry before you even start applying your makeup. If you apply makeup too quickly, it's gonna start pilling. Because of this white cast component, they do offer a universally tinted, universally um, tinted formula. That one retails for $47 Canadian and $36 US. I love having this, especially in summer. It's in my makeup bag, my travel makeup bag, because it maximizes space. So one of the last products I want to mention very briefly is the F-Bomb Electrolyte Water Facial Mask. I just did a pretty intensive review of it on YouTube, so I'll link that video. But the F-Bomb is a super hydrator. Some of its ingredients or its star ingredients include like sodium hyaluronate, vitamin F, which is not a of standard vitamin, it's omega-3 and omega-6. It includes coconut water, niacinamide. Again, if you wanna dive into the ingredient list, I'll link the video that I filmed recently. It's a great product if you have extreme dry skin that you just can't seem to get rid of. Um, you're chronically dry like me or you're very dehydrated and you need that moisture boost. This mask is fantastic, but it's so specific that it don't think it translates well for people that have maybe oily or combination skin or even normal skin. You probably don't need this much hydration. I mean, you can always use more hydration, but if you're not dry or dehydrated, it's not really a mask you should be dying to buy, basically. Um, it does work well if you want a multi-mask. If you like using the baby facial, this would be a great mask to follow up just to protect your skin from all that chemical exfoliation. And we've come to the end. You might be wondering, what about the rest of the Drunk Elephant products? There's three things that I didn't really mention, which is the lip balm and the two uh, facial soaps, the Peaky Bar and the Juju bar. Those are uh, cleansing bars that look like soap. They're not made out of soap. They're just three products that I've never used and never really tried to explore. If you've used and enjoyed them, feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments. And hopefully this will be a nice reference when you're out shopping and you're not sure where you want to spend your money. If you have any questions, let's chat in the comments and hopefully I'll see you very soon.